You said in your opening statement that anti-American incitement or statements does not necessarily equal recidivism or re-engagement. Does it violate uh, the memorandum of understandings, however, that we have with the receiving countries? Uh, I can't speak it, uh, in this session about the specific understandings we have with our with the partners with whom the countries we've, with whom we have worked to transfer detainees. But one of the, the key features of any of those agreements is, of course, on monitoring ongoing activity by the detainees, which covers a wide range of factors and would certainly include you know, all manner of their activities. My comments in my prepared statement just spoke to kind of a definitional threshold for what would constitute reengagement for the purposes of, of, an, of a threat assessment. We consider anti-American incitement by Islamic terrorists pretty serious business, don't we? Absolutely. Um, and again, Anwar al Awlaki would say that we consider it very serious business, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Um, Mr. McKeon, you said earlier uh, to Senator Graham that the United States, the administration is barred from bringing Guantanamo detainees to the, to the United States mainland. It's also barred from releasing detainees without 30 days congressional notification. Why should the American people believe that that obligation will be any more respected than the prior notification obligation was last year? Sir, the lack of notification in the Bergdahl case has not been repeated. I don't expect it to be repeated. But my point is that all laws are created equal. There was a law that required prior notification. It was not followed. There's a law that prohibits detainees from coming to Guantanamo Bay. This administration has a habit of surprising the American people on national security matters. Senator, what I can say is, as to the 30-day notice issue, uh, our lawyers believed we had a valid legal reason for the action we took, and we'll get you that explanation. And now I want to explore the so-called risk balance between recidivism of released terrorists and the propaganda value that terrorists get from Guantanamo Bay. How many recidivists are there at Guantanamo Bay right now? I'm not sure I follow the question. There's, How many detainees we, we at don't Guantanamo have any... Bay are engaging in terrorism or anti-American excitement? They're... They're there are pretty locked down. I don't because think they're, they're detained, because they only engage in that kind of recidivism overseas. Islamic terrorists don't need an excuse to attack the United States. They don't attack us for what they do. They attack us for who we are. It is not a security decision. It is a political decision based on a promise the president made on his campaign. To say that it is a security decision based on propaganda value that our enemies get from it is a pretext to justify a political decision. In my opinion, the only problem with Guantanamo Bay is there are too many empty beds and cells there right now. We should be sending more terrorists there for further interrogation to keep this country safe. As far as I'm concerned, every last one of them can rot in hell. But as long as they don't do that, then they can rot in Guantanamo Bay. I had really the same feeling that, uh, that Senator Cotton had for a lot, a lot of years. Then I went to Guantanamo. Propaganda, I have to agree with Senator Cotton on that. I don't think they need an excuse to attack America. Now that's that to me that doesn't hold water what does is three million dollars per per detainee and eighty thousand to the hardened prisoners we have we have nobody escaping we don't have any ones escaped from america could we uh house them here could we imprison them here and do it and feel secured and safe on the issue of could we do it in the united states yes we could no we would still hold them under some kind of military guard were we to bring them in the, in the united states unless we were able to prosecute all of them in federal court and put them into the Bureau of Prison System. But there are a number of these detainees that we've already determined we will not be able, very unlikely we will be able to prosecute in federal court.